Equity Bank has reported a 7.75% uh, decline in net profits for the first half of the year. Now, that figure, of course, has declined in the backdrop of a range of issues. Uh, the rate capping laws introduced last year in September is a key one. As a result, net interest income was down 15.5%. Equity's customer base is roughly around 11.7 million at the moment, backed by internet agency and mobile banking channels. Now, in announcing the results barely 24 hours ago, Equity CEO James Mwangi said he was encouraged that the bank's non-interest income had actually grown by 20%, about $126 odd million, uh, to mitigate that net reduction in interest income. Now, the bank so far has closed 11 of its ATM uh, lobbies in the country. It's also sent home at least 200 of its 300 workers in South Sudan, following the closure of eight of its branches in the war-torn country. What we have done uh, uh, is to, uh, to cushion ourselves by uh, trying to adjust ourselves to the new reality of the world that had erupted and the level of business that have come down um, uh, by uh, reducing uh, the number of uh, branches. Uh, we were affected actually by the war. Two of our branches were affected by a war in uh, Malakal and, and Bor. Uh, and we have experienced uh, the, the, uh, that the number of, of customers in some of the area outside Juba have uh, drastically uh, reduced. The government uh, decided to withdraw uh, the salaries from, from the banks. So it has affected us uh, because that was only source uh, to recover uh, the loans. So we had to, to re-strategize our uh, 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 plan in terms of, of, of loans by uh, 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 suspending uh, loans for now and a focus on uh, recovery. All right, so let's dig deeper into those numbers. Elizabeth Nogo is the head of research at Genghis Capital. She's with me in the studio right now. Thank you for your time. Thank you for hosting me. Um, you've got a sell recommendation in Equity Bank, and part of the argument you made is that relative to the sector, it's got a price-to-book ratio of about 1.9. The sector average is about 1.3. Walk us through your assessment that led to that sell recommendation. All right. Um, so uh, we earlier on uh, did a valuation exercise on Equity Bank, arriving at a target price of 31.9. So uh, this was based on a price-to-book valuation methodology, uh, where we now uh, did our forecast on our models and arrived to that price. Uh, again, now that is based on our in-house recommendations. So at that time, uh, the recommendation was a hold uh, based on the current price. So uh, with the current price right now trading at uh, 43, it's, it's above uh, over 30 percent above our target price, uh, giving it a sell recommendation. If you look at the price to book, it's currently at 1.9 times uh, compared to the industry average of uh, around 1.3. Uh, it's definitely uh, trading above the industry. So, but is it is it perhaps at price. that level? Because maybe some traders are saying, look, somewhere in the second half of the year, maybe in the first half of 2018, you might be in a position where the rate cap law is either modified or repealed altogether. And when that happens, I'd like to be in equity because, given the size of their balance sheet, the amount of liquidity they have, they're probably best positioned to actually recover. Yes, actually, I would look at it in two ways. One. Uh, in the past, uh, investors have been attaching a premium to equity bank compared to other banks in the industry. So that's one of the factors. The second one is uh, the liquidity levels that equity bank is currently holding. It indicates that in case the law is repealed, then they would immensely benefit from it. So it would be more of now looking at after the, the law is revised. Right. Um, yes. So we, we focus on South Sudan there, um, firing 200 people. Uh, they've reduced the branch count by about eight, down from 30 to about five. Yeah. Would you advise, assuming James Wong is probably going to watch this, but would you advise him to just cut his losses and get out of South Sudan altogether? Well, in as much as South Sudan, there's still challenges. It's, it's to a lesser extent. If, if for instance, the conditions uh, come back to normalcy, uh, the rebound will be much faster because if that is they retain the branches, they currently have five branches, uh, as compared to re-entering the market again afresh. Mm -hmm. So uh, it would be wise to just hold on uh, as it is right now with the five branches. And looking at uh, South Sudan, it's currently servicing uh, key clients, uh, including uh, United Nations staff, uh, mm -hmm. oil rich business units. So uh, in the long term, once all the conditions are back to normalcy. 
uh, we would expect the rumor, uh, yeah, ribbon that, to be a bit faster. That's a pretty big if, though. I mean, the, the, the Civil War's been running for what, since December 20, 2013, 2015, somewhere there, and it's still been yes. going on. It's a huge Yes, year. another way to look at it would be uh, the contribution to yeah. the bottom line. It mm. wouldn't really affect it significantly. That's mm. why uh, maybe the bank is also holding on to the fact that the the conditions might be better. Right. Um, yes. So staff costs uh, at equity, because the cost to income ratio actually did go up quite a bit, but I think that was more of a function of um, the income falling than costs yeah. actually going up. Yes. But they've already managed to cut the staff costs by about 15.5%. Is there any more room to cut costs across the entire bank? Yes, definitely there's more room mm -hmm. to cut costs. Uh, one, if you look at it this way, most banks are looking now moving away from the fixed cost element. Mm. So the bank the bank will be looking at now um, removing the fixed cost element and just maintaining the variable cost. Yeah. So in this way, because we've seen m most customers moving away from the branches mm. level. At currently, 10% uh, of the customers only now transact in the branches. This means that most customers have uh, adopted the online uh, the mobile banking and the agency channels. So, so they don't need to pay as much rent yes. or have a physical presence as yes, much as they did before. Yes, yes. Right. Um, one last question for you. Um, equities portfolio of government securities, and these, these, these numbers are particularly fascinating. Um, it's nearly doubled from yeah. the first quarter of last year. Um, they had about $605 million in government paper. End of the second quarter, nearly, well, $1.1 billion. Mm -hmm. But given how much liquidity is holding right now, it's about 51%, if yes, I remember the number right. correctly. Yeah. Can they continue for the rest of the fiscal year um, through to June 2018? Can they continue with this strategy, piling more cash into government securities? Well, that, that's uh, intended to happen because the bank, uh, if you compare the strategy of the bank uh, against other banks, they are more cautious mm. uh, because of the rate cap. So uh, they intend to do much more of government security. So the remaining half of the year would expect to see the same trend continue and probably now uh, uh, offering more products now to other regional units. Mm. Yes. Right. We'll leave it there for the time being. Thank you very much for your insights. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.